The 12th Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Jubrilai Ila, is my guest today on View from the Top. I'm Modili Faisuf, and I'm delighted that you could join us today. Admiral Ayala joined the Nigerian Navy as a cadet officer in 1966 and rose to its very pinnacle before retiring in 1999. He also served the nation in different capacities in the course of his distinguished career. And I'd like you to find out more about him before we settle down to our conversation. Joining us, sir. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Before we reminisce about the old days, let us talk about the Nigerian Navy of today. Its primary responsibility, as we've been taught, is the security and protection of economic interests in the maritime environment. But with all of the bunkering, crude oil theft, pipeline vandalism, piracy, smuggling, is the Navy overwhelmed? Well, I don't know what the situation is like on the ground operationally for the Navy, but uh, I can say from my own uh, personal perspective that I don't think we have equipped the Navy enough to cope with the current challenges that we have in the nation. Uh, I. I want to say this with all sense of responsibility that uh, a nation only has the armed forces and indeed Navy being a part of the armed forces that it can pay for that it deserves. And uh, if we quantify the losses that we incur uh, through our not effectively having the forces that we should have you see that we are being uh, uh, penny-wise, pamphoolish. Uh, because uh, if you give one hundred or one thousand of what we are losing to equip the service correctly, and the Navy especially, uh, then you can see that we've cut out most of these losses. Uh, all along, all these years, we've been operating with the with very lean budgets and uh, things are not becoming easier. If you look, for example, at the cost of uh, the fuel that we use as diesel uh, from 7 Kobo in the 80s to 11 Kobo in the 90s, we are now talking of 160 Naira for a litre. Some of the ships we have, like Aradu, for example, will take uh, 400 tons, 400 tons of diesel. If you quantify that in terms of costs, we are talking of like the whole budget of the Navy for a month, for one ship, just one ship. We are not talking of the uh, other aspects of victualing, of uh, uh, maintenance of the ship itself, and so many other um, amenities that you need to put in place for you to service a ship like that. And when you want a ship at sea, you need about four ashore. I mean, you need four ships. To have one always at sea, then you need to have four. So if you want ten at sea, you need to have forty, and so on and so forth. So we have not uh, uh, brought our inventories up, up to um, the level commensurate with the challenges that are uh, now surfacing. Do you think personnel-wise the Navy is fine? Personnel-wise we have a lot of uh, well-trained officers and men and uh, as you know you need the equipment for these men to operate. Bunkering, piracy, uh, crude oil theft, are all things that are occurring because those to deter these occurrences are not there at sea where they should be. 
if there are ships out there at sea in the operational areas all the time it would deter uh, there would be culprits talking generally how would you rate the military's efforts in the war against terrorism well i guess the military is doing the best it could um, we generally would like to avoid using uh, men of war in quelling insurrection internal uh, crisis like that but uh, it should be at the at the real tail end of your efforts that you bring in the military uh, one of the problems that we have in nigeria is that we have militarized our environment so much so that uh, you know you keep upping the ante all the time um, well it's like a global phenomenon but it's not the best um, when the policemen used to use batons you didn't have robbers going about with guns, guns. you understand and once you start arming everybody with armed customs with armed uh, civil defense <laughs> civil defense <laughs> they are armed now you say so you keep upping the ante so the the uh, the bad guy outside will tend to try to outdo you in arms and they generally succeed sometimes they are more armed more sophisticatedly armed than our uh, men our law enforcement agencies then when you have a civil war one of the things you are supposed to do soon after the war is to disarm that means you take out arms from the hands of those who shouldn't be having arms we didn't do that and that is also the problem with most of Africa, all the small, small wars. There's now a proliferation of small arms, which is a big problem, a great problem. So what can Nigeria be doing differently? My panacea to our problems is in the fact that we need a better foundation. And what would that foundation be? Education. We need to educate ourselves a lot more. Uh, the children, uh, maybe the next generation that are coming of how we should believe, how we should live, how we should go back to our normal values and ethos and so on. Uh, because right now um, there's a kind of materialistic tendency in everyone. Everybody wants to get rich very quickly. Uh, I didn't own a car until uh, maybe I was a lieutenant in the Navy. I was maybe 10 years after working. And I had to save half of all my salary to be able to afford a car. And I was telling someone the other day that the day I bought the car, I didn't have money to buy petrol in it. So the person I bought the car from had to refund part of the money so that I can buy petrol into my car. What I'm saying in effect is that, you know, we need to go back uh, to basics. If you have well uh, schooled kids you probably have less health problems you understand if there's a lot of sanitation then you have to spend less on disease control and on uh, on curing diseases and all that those are some of the basics I'm talking about when I'm talking of education it's not just going to school Natural. and all that if I did my civics well in school I'll know that it's a, a crime against society for me to go and uh, start breaking the pipeline to siphon fuel. And what would I be siphoning the fuel for anyway? If you had a good job? Yes. Then you'll need less policemen to police us. You'll need less government. Everybody will be law abiding. <laughs> we'll need to build uh, houses and start putting electric fences and burglar proofing that stops you even from getting out if a fire was on and you die in the fire. After what has been described as a distinguished career, you were Chief of Naval Staff for a 10-month period. What would you say were your biggest achievements in that time? I can't even uh, uh, try to glean what my achievements are. I think I leave that to posterity. In your days, the military was highly politicized. Uh, are you confident <laughs> that the Nigerian military has permanently weaned itself of its school plotting habits? Yeah, cool, cool plotting has become uh, a thing of the past, I hope, um, because, you know, it is, it is an aberration 
it was we 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 were never trained to uh, interfere in governance our training was to support the local authorities the civil authorities and uh, it wasn't to partake in governance i always said it i'm not a military apologist it was um, an accident of history that brought Nigerian military into politics. And uh, being in politics affected the military more adversely than it affected the whole nation. And so the earliest we got out of governance and uh, faced our professional calling, the better it became for the military. And that started maybe in 1999 or so. I do believe that those we call military generals have all got out of the military. And now we have more professional men. We have men who are now well-trained, well-brought-up. I mean, when I talk of a well-trained officer, a well-trained officer doesn't think of anything but his straight-jacket job, that of the military.